what I want to do is just look through uh, briefly the sales cycle. And I wanted to start by just looking at a customer in terms of the setup of a customer. So we looked at uh, really the ability to do personalization um, at a role center level. We also have the ability to do personalization in terms of these cards. So uh, I really encourage clients um, spend some time, you know, look at um, look at how you're using um, and what data elements you're using as you implement the system. It's going to help, um, you know, user adoption, user um, user satisfaction of the system uh, to get these cards um, in such a way that makes sense for your users. So if there's functionality you're using, great, display it, allow users to see it. If there's functionality you're not, you can hide it, get it off the page. I want to just talk about some feature functionality from a sales perspective. First thing to note, though, is that master records are the ID themselves I can modify. So this is not true with all systems, but in this case, do I want to rename a record? Yes. Um, this is going to rename the record. It's also going to rename all of my history, all my setup pages, et cetera. So I can change IDs on customers, vendors, GL accounts, inventory items, really anything in the system that I've used as a setup feature, I can change if I have security to do that. Um, uh, IC is intercompany partner code. So I said that we have the ability to do intercompany at a GL perspective. We also have it on the sales and receivables transactions. So if this is actually an intercompany trading partner versus just a customer, I can designate that here. Always have visibility to um, transactions, balances, that sort of thing on master records. So you'll see that I've got customer balance, et cetera. Um, document sending profile. Just want to briefly talk about this. We have the ability to send, and I say that in air quotes, uh, send transactions, both sales and receivables transactions. So this would allow me to designate a customer or vendor as an email uh, or a print um, as a delivery mechanism. Then when I go to send a sales order, sales invoices, purchase orders, et cetera, it's automatically going to distribute it via email or uh, print. We have the ability to do multiple uh, unlimited addresses, ship to addresses and contacts. Uh, just go down here a little bit. Uh, full sales tax uh, calculations if needed. So the system can maintain all of your sales tax calculations, all of your you know, individual jurisdictions, the roll-ups, et cetera. Uh, we do integrate with um, via some apps to uh, other sales tax providers as well. So if you're selling on a national basis, this could be a horrible mess to maintain. Leverage a sales tax provider. They can actually file your taxes if we want to. Uh, posting groups maintains my connections back to the GL. Currency code, we are fully uh, multi-currency enabled throughout the application. So uh, transaction-based, GL-based, banking, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, default currencies on all those things, we can process on a transaction basis into a different currency. We can integrate with um, a whole host of different um, exchange rate providers. Clients that I've implemented multi-currency with typically would get a reference from their bank in terms of what um, uh, exchange rate service to use, but that can be fully automated. Download exchange rates on whatever interval you want. Uh, payments, we do have payment terms and we also have cash flow payment terms. So we have the ability to designate, you know, what is this customer or how often or when does this customer actually pay us versus our stated terms. So maybe you're net 30 with the customer, but they pay in 60 days. I could use 60 days as my cash flow payment term. So I'm going to get a more accurate cash flow, but I never tell my customer that. We do have finance um, charges that can be charged uh, or not charged to a customer's account. So we can do uh, percentage, we can do fixed fees, all sorts of different things there. We do have the ability to do statements. Um, reminders and statements are two different things um, uh, from a business central perspective. They just do different things. So we've got two sets of functionality. Full shipping uh, capabilities in the system. So uh, via an app, we do have the ability to do direct connections and processing of shipping transactions within business central. So integrate with major carriers as well as some minor carriers. FedEx, UPS, um, USPS, et cetera, designate that as a ship to code. Uh, we can print shipping labels, et cetera. We can actually do um, a freight shopping if we want to within Business Central, but this is um, some shipping integration if we want to, visibility to statistics off of the customer. All right, I'm just gonna look at the sales cycle briefly here. So opening this window up, we've got blanket sales order, sales quote, sales order, sales invoices, and we do have the full uh, return capabilities. Return capabilities is a um, RMA, so a sales return order. Uh, we have the ability to receive that RMA, issue a return. Um, connected to that, we can leverage the full return to vendor as well. So if you need to receive the item back from the customer and issue a return back to the vendor, we can manage all that and keep all those uh, transactions connected if needed. I'm just gonna open up a sales order um, just to talk a little bit about some feature functionality on a sales order. So um, 
Fact boxes, again, are available to us. Uh, fact boxes on a sales order would give us visibility not only to the customer account, but line item specific information. So for example, if I wanna know quantity available, if I wanna look at pricing, I wanna look at cost, uh, et cetera, there's a good example of how I can leverage a fact box. I can provide whatever information the person uh, needs as they're entering the sales order without having them navigate anywhere else. We do have full line item functionality though to get price, finding discounts, exploded bombs. Uh, we can do reservations. So we've got all that functionality if you want to at a line item level, but sometimes just quick visibility really meets the requirement that people have. In terms of processing, we've got you know full date capabilities. We've got address capabilities, campaigns, opportunities, all sorts of things that we can do on a sales order level. Um, we only want to expose the fields that are required or, or pertinent to your implementation. So we want to work to eliminate anything that's not necessary, make it as easy as possible for users to enter data. Again, we've got the ability to do quick entry in terms of the tab key, enter key. So maybe dates are visible, but I don't need to stop in every one of them. Not a problem. Uh, we can just take the tab stops off. Across the top, just look at this a little bit. Uh, this is that payment prediction, the ability to leverage AI at the time of entering a sales order to say, well, as I'm entering this, what's the likelihood that the customer is gonna pay late? I do have the ability to do planning off of the sales order. So I can I can um, do uh, available to promise and capable to promise, depending on if I'm doing manufacturing or if I'm just doing service. I can create a production order um, via the uh, sales order if I wanna do that. So that would depend if I wanna do make to order, make to stock type transactions. So all that functionality is available off of the sales order if I want to. In terms of what I can sell, um, I can sell uh, inventory items, I can sell GL accounts. So if that would be a transaction that's maybe service related, I don't wanna set up a, a resource or something like that, I just wanna put a, some sort of descriptor on there, that'd be a GL account. We can sell resources, so that would be people machines, think project-based, um, time and materials, that sort of thing. But I can put it right on a sales order if I want to. There's the ability to sell the fixed asset. So, um, Again, this is more of like a transaction based against the fixed asset itself. Um, so items, um, you know, inventory items, I've got variants, I've got multiple locations, I've got full unit of measure conversion, pricing capabilities, et cetera. Just want to draw your attention to these four fields right here on the sales order. So depending on the complexity of your uh, distribution environment, we actually have the ability to do posting and processing the shipment and the invoice right off the sales order. So I said, if you don't need warehouse operations, um, we can do all of the warehousing shipping function right from the sales order. I can actually print a pick list, and et cetera, if I want to right from uh, the sales order. If you want to um, have those processes set up separately, your organization needs that, not a problem. These become read-only fields. So they're visible on the sales order. So I know from a sales order perspective what's happening on the document, on the transaction, but I can't actually process a shipment, for example, from here. And I'd have to go create a warehouse shipment. Uh, again, depending on how you need your warehouse to be configured. So business central functionality can expand and contract to meet uh, whatever your organization specific requirements are. And I can mix and match that. If a particular location requires those documents, fine, I enable for those. I can shut it off for the other ones, okay? All right, um, pretty straightforward in terms of data entry. I talked about uh, printing. I'm just gonna print a, a confirmation here so that everyone can see this. Uh, so this is an example of a sales order confirmation. There's probably eight or 10 different templates that can be used for sales order acknowledgement, sales invoice, purchase orders, picking documents, et cetera. These are all modifiable using Microsoft Word. So these are just Word templates. You very easily can download a template from Business Central, open it up in Word, make modifications to it, upload it back into the system, and you're off and running. So the ability to uh, maintain these documents and what they look like for your organization, very easy to do. So you do have control over fonts, colors, graphics, um, really whatever you can do in Word, essentially you can make happen um, using one of these Word templates. So very easy to modify, change, uh, uh, make fit your specific requirements for your organization. Um, I do have the ability to then email these documents as well. So if I said email confirmation, for example, what the system will do is it will take the output, uh, the output that we just looked at, it's gonna create a PDF document, append it or attach it to an email and then send the email out. So uh, it's not gonna send a Word doc in that, in that case, it's gonna actually send a PDF document. You can also embed it into the um, body of the email if I needed to.